All right, I'm going to show you that the Catholic doctrine of celibate priests is a doctrine of devils. Okay, let's turn to the Catholic Catechism and see what they say about why priests have to remain celibate and how priests are required to remain celibate and compare that with what the Holy Scriptures, the Word of God says. You see, you got man's tradition on one side, the Holy Scriptures on another side, and we're going to see which one is correct. And obviously it's the Holy Scriptures, and we're going to see which one overthrew is the other. So first, this is from the Catholic Church Catechism, paragraph 1579, 1579. It says, All the ordained ministers of the Latin Church, with the exception of permanent deacons, are normally chosen from among men of faith who live a celibate life and who intend to remain celibate, for the sake, quote, for the sake of the kingdom of heaven, called to consecrate themselves with undivided uh, heart to the Lord, and, quote, to the affairs of of the Lord, they give themselves entirely to God and to men. Celibacy is a sign of this new life and a service of which the church's minister is consecrated, except that with a joyous heart, celibacy uh, radiantly proclaims the reign of God. Mm. We're going to see about that with the word of God, because no, it does not. Actually, celibacy, celibacy does not do that. Okay, This is paragraph 1599 from the Catholic Church Catechism. It says, in the Latin Church, the holy, the sacrament of holy orders for the presbyter, 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 hope I'm saying that right, is normally conferred on only on candidates who are ready to embrace celibacy freely, and who publicly manifest their intention of staying celibate for the love of God's kingdom and the service of men. So, they're saying that you basically have to embrace celibacy. Okay. Now, what does the Word of God say about this? Because you've got man tradition. Now, let's see what the Word of God says. First of all, the Holy Scriptures teach that the Apostle Peter, who was supposedly the first pope, was married. Turn to Matthew chapter 8, verses 14 and 15. And when Jesus was coming to Peter's house, he saw his wife's mother laid and sick of a fever, and he touched her hand, and, her, and the fever left her, and she arose and ministered unto them. His wife's mother... So Peter had a wife. Interesting. He was a married man. He was not celibate like a pope would be, or a priest would be. Next, the Holy Scriptures teach that Mary, marriage is not only allowed for a, for a bishop, but it's actually mandatory for a bishop. They actually have to be married. Not only is it allowed, they actually have to be in order to meet the qualifications of a bishop. 1 Timothy chapter 3, verses 1-5. This is a true saying, if a man desire the office of a bishop, he desireth a good work. A bishop then must be blameless, the husband of one wife, vigilant, sober, of good behavior, given a hospitality, apt to teach, not given to wine, nor striker, nor not greedy, a filthy lucre, but patient, not a brawler, not covetous, but one, one that ruleth well his own house, having his children in subjection with all gravity. For if a man not know, know not how to rule his own house, how shall he take care of the church of God? So not only are they allowed to be married, they had to be married. They have to be married, and, and have children too. And children means plural, meaning more than one child too, in order to meet that qualification of being a bishop or an overseer. And by the way, bishop and pastor are the same thing. They're just two titles for the same office. A uh, bishop is not above the pastor. It's, it's another Roman Catholic false doctrine. So you ha they have to be married. Not only are they allowed to, they have to be. But next, the Holy Scriptures teach that for celibacy is a doctrine of devils. Turn to 1 Timothy chapter 4, verses 1 to 3. Now the Spirit speaketh expressly that in the latter times some shall depart from the faith, giving heed to seducing spirits and doctrines of devils, speaking lies and hypocrisy, having a conscience seared with a hot iron, forbidding to marry, and commanding to abstain from meats, which God hath created to be received with thanksgiving of them uh, which believe and know the truth. Okay, so notice how it says forbidding to marry. And, and commanding to abstain from meats. What's the abstaining from meats? Uh, that's called Lent, the Catholic holiday of Lent, the Catholic holy day of Lent. They're abstaining from meat. It's a commandment, but what does the scripture say? It's a doctrine of devils to command to abstain from meat. And then forbidding to marry. That's also a doctrine of devils. You see right there, you know, that a lot of times someone shall depart from the faith giving heed to the doctrine of the devils. And then it lists them as forbidding to marry, commanding to abstain from meats, and then God goes on to say how, you know, in the next verse is how you know the meats are sanctified through prayer, which Lent is a whole other subject, how it's also a doctrine of devils. But forbidding to marry, forcing celibacy upon somebody is a doctrine of devils. It's an end times heresy. 
So Roman Catholic uh, priesthood celibacy is a, is a Roman Catholic doctrine of devils, plain and simple. Roman Catholicism is not Christianity. Roman Catholicism is a pagan uh, perversion, a pagan corruption of Christianity. That's all it is. It is not the faith once delivered unto the saints as per Jude 1 3. It's a pagan corruption of the faith once delivered unto the saints as per Jude 1 3. So don't be deceived by the Roman Catholicism. Uh, bishops have to be married. It's a, it's a requirement. Not only, are they, not only are they allowed to be married, they have to be married. And forbidding to marry is a doctrine of devils and it comes from seducing spirits. So don't be deceived by Roman Catholicism. May the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ be with all the brethren. Goodbye. Thank you.